Okay, he's usually six and two, but you never know if you're going to be one of the six. So let's find out who George will mark as his winners this weekend. And we get things kicked off on Thursday night out at Lowry Field between Tascosa and Coronado in Georgia, of course. Coronado getting a win last week. Tascosa getting the win against Lubbock High. Mm -hmm. Can the Mustangs find a way to get maybe another edge and get back to two wins in this district? I think they can. I just think it may be a little tough on them. Uh, you know, it's going to depend on two things. How quickly can Coronado put the loss to Monterey because it's a big rivalry game. I know it's a big emotional game. How, how quickly can they put that behind them? And then how quickly can they get ready on a short week? Those two things together are going to be very, very tough for Coronado. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying it can't be done. I just think it's going to be very, very difficult with a, with a Tascosa team coming in. If it was a Lubbock High team or if it was Central or, or somebody else besides one of the two Amarillo teams coming in, I might give Coronado the edge, but Tascosa has been playing very well. I just think they're going to be a little too much. I think it's going to be a, 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 a very close game, maybe about a 24-21 game, but I'm going to go with Tascosa in this one. All right, two teams also looking to maybe get a piece of that district and get a win. San Angelo Central taking on Lubbock High. That game, of course, out at Lowry Field again on Friday night. George, who do you like in this one? And can the Westerners get out of this funk, or is Central going to be too much for them? I, I think Central is probably just going to be a little too much. You know, Lubbock High is still just struggling with the offense, hasn't been able to generate anything, you know, that, that, that can keep teams, you know, you know from, from just running out on them and, and, and getting a big lead early. You know, Lubbock High has got to find some offense somewhere. I just don't know if they're going to have enough. I think Central is a solid ball club, but I don't think they're anything special. So if Lubbock High can, can play some solid defense and find a way to get some points, then I think they'll be in the game, you know, there at the end. I just haven't seen it from uh, Lubbock High yet so far to have any confidence in being able to pick them. I'm going to go with Central this week. All right, well, Monterey getting their first district win last week. Having to go out and visit Amarillo this week. Sandy is, of course, a very good football team. George, that defense is probably going to present some challenges for the Plainsmen. Absolutely, it is. Uh, you know, and, and not only will the defense present some challenges, but uh, you know, Amarillo's offense is going to present some challenges. The thing is, though, Monterey's got to play some outstanding defense. If they can play defense pretty much like they did against, against Coronado, I thought they played very well defensively. If they can play that again, you know, in, a, in a totally different style game against Amarillo with that wing tee, and keep the ball, you know, keep Amrell from, you know, holding the ball and running out the clock, then I think they'll, they'll have a chance. I just don't know if they'll be able to score enough points and, and hold Amrell out of the end zone enough to be able to do that. I like Amrell at home against uh, on this one. All right, Tigers trying to stick, get two district wins in a row, taking on Palo Duro in the friendly confines in Wolferth. We talked about Brandon Hanslick earlier in the show, George, and is this something, maybe a glimpse with that aerial game now working, of a more balanced team that we might see the rest of the season? Absolutely, and I think that's absolutely going to be the key here. You've got to have the balance, and you've got to go out and repeat what you did last week. You know, whatever you did last week in preparation, whatever you did in practice, you know, whatever meal you ate, Whatever, you know, if you put your shoes on the same way, just go out and do it the same way this week if your friendship and go out and prepare the same way. Brad Davis talked about how their preparation was good, how they were just focused on winning one game. Well, you've got to go out with that preparation and that same focus again. If friendship can do that, I think they'll have enough defense to stop Paladura and I think they'll have enough offense to outscore Paladura, which hasn't really scored all that much this year. I'm going to go with the Tigers in this one. I think they've maybe got it back on the right track. All right, second game Friday night out at Lowry Field will be Shallower taking on Estacado. And when you look on the schedule and how these two teams have played out, George, it seems like we've mentioned Estacado and Cooper maybe being the two teams heading for that title. But this is probably what you would call a trap game in this instance. A, 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 a bit of a trap game. I, I look at it from Shallower standpoint. If you're going to be, you know, if you're going to challenge for the district title in this district, then this is the game that you've got to have, and it's the, it's the game that you've got to go out and play well. Now, I don't know if Shallow Water can match Estacado's speed. I don't know if anybody in this district is going to be able to match Estacado's speed. But at the same time, though, if you're Estacado, you've really got to come out focused because Shallow Water will be able to put up some, some yards and some points on you if you're not focused on defense. I just don't see that happening, though. I think being a home game and being Esta with Estacado's speed, I think they're just going to be a little bit too much. I think Shallow Water will be in it for a while, but I think in the end, Estacado will pull away and get the win. Cooper going to visit La Mesa, and of course La Mesa lost their contest to Shallow Water last week. Cooper coming off that shutout win against Loveland. Can the Pirates keep things rolling in this one? I think so because I, th I think the thing that Cooper can look at here is, you know, they've already beaten Brownfield, they've already beaten Loveland. If they beat La Mesa here, then that guarantees Cooper a playoff spot. You know, no, no matter what else happens in the district, no matter what else happens the rest of the way. So I think Cooper will come out very focused on this game and you know wanting to get that playoff spot taken care of. And I think you know, you know, talent wise, I think they'll just have too much for La Mesa. I think they'll be able to outscore uh, La Mesa. And I think Lamise is going to have a tough time stopping all of Cooper's weapons. I like the Pirates to secure a playoff spot in this one. 
All right, well, two schools that are no strangers to each other in this one, Muleshoe visiting Littlefield. Normally a matchup we wait to see in the postseason to see who's going to eliminate who from getting to that state title game. How interesting of a game can this one get? I think this is probably going to be your game of the week on the South Plains. I, I really wish, you know, that I could get out for this game because I think it's going to be an outstanding football game against two teams to, with, with, that are loaded with talent and playing very well offensively, playing very well defensively right now. Of course, you got Muleshoe, and they're going to spread it out and, and throw the ball around. And you've got Littlefield who's going to pack it in and, and run it right at you. And this is this is a big game. And Little, uh, if Muleshoe wants to, uh, you know, be in this district race till the end, they've got to have this one. But Littlefield can pretty much secure the district championship with this one because they'll, they'll have owned a lot of the tiebreakers to this point. Being at home, being the way Littlefield is playing and controlling the football with the run, I'm going to go with the Wildcats in this one. All right, New Deal Lions can take another step at that postseason run. Tohoka visiting them this weekend. Do you like the Lions to keep on rolling? I do, but I, you know, I got to give credit to Tohoka. To, to they they have become a very good football team. I was a little skeptical with some of their schedule. Uh, you know, they'd lost one game to Plains, which was really the best team that they had played. And so I was a little, you know, skeptical with their schedule. But then they turn around and, and go and beat a Sundown team that beat uh, New Deal the week before. So you know, I got to give Tohoka credit. Now they are a very good football team, and this has really opened up the the, the district chase back up for New Deal. And I think they realize that the thing with New Deal is they they are just you know wrecked with injuries they've got a couple of offensive linemen out they've got uh, you know tight ends out they're having to shift a lot of kids around but I think New Deal you know because the door has been opened back up for them I like New Deal to go ahead and and you know force a three-way tie in this district and then we'll see you know how it plays out with the positive points but I like the Lions to get back on track after the bye going out and, and getting the win this week. All right, so Georgia's picks for week eight. Tascosa over Coronado, San Angelo Central over Lubbock High, Amarillo over Monterey, Friendship over Palo Duro, Estacado over Shallow Water, Cooper over La Mesa, Littlefield over Muleshoe, and New Deal over Tahoka. And that'll do it for us on Football Fever this week. And as always, we'd like to thank everyone at LAST TV for everything that they do. Be sure to check the website for more info on upcoming games and episodes of the show. And you can follow all your favorite teams each weekend on the Avalanche Journal's high school website, LoneStarVarsity.com, for all the latest news and scores. For George Watson, I'm Travis Cram. We'll see you next week right here on The Fever. Go Rangers, everyone. Last week, catching one. What the heck did I write on that? One, five balls on offense? <laughs> That's what I get for reading instead of just memorizing this. Okay. <laughs> Time to find out who George likes as his teams this in the la, 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 la. What was that? We're getting some as good his, real stuff this as week. As the huh? teams in his winner's circle. What was I dude, I typed this so late last night. <clears throat> out at Lowry Field this weekend on Friday night as Tasco said that's not who's playing. Gosh dang it. I looked at Tasco and Coronado right before I started that. <laughs>